Good morning brothers and sisters and happy Sabbath. Uh, my name is Michael and welcome to our sacrament meeting. And I ask that you have your emblems ready as we prepare for our sacrament service. Let us invite the Spirit to be with us today. Loving Creator God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that your Spirit will be with us and is with us all the time. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who showed us the way to be. We thank you for the many things he did for us. Lord, we ask that your Spirit be with us today and all those people who are watching this video and uh, that we can take the Lord's Sacrament and that your Spirit will be with us for all time. And I say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So, happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. I'm afraid Kyle's not with us today. He's He's not feeling too good and uh, so we pray that he is well, Lord. And uh, we hope that everyone is well out there, Lord. And and if not, you, you will bring healing power to help them, Lord. So as we do every Sunday morning, we bless the sacrament and... Uh, David's given me some uh, new prayers, but I can't pronounce the um, the names at the moment, so I'm learning them. So we shall stick with the the Mormon uh, from the Book of Mormon. So we start off with the with the bread. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So if you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever your preference, and let us pray. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of Thy body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him and Keep his commandments which he have given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it that they may do so in remembrance of thy blood, of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. 
I want to talk to you about one of my favorite scriptures in the New Testament, and that is Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 41. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man or woman which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he or she shall not lose his or her reward. I feel like this is a very important scripture in the Latter-day Saint movement because as Latter-day Saints, a lot of times we have to take the brunt of other Christians, whether you're Protestant, Catholic, or something else, attacking us and saying, hey, you're not real Christians, you're Mormons, or LDS, or whatever they want to call us. They usually lump us in as all as Mormons. And we say, hey, no, we worship Jesus too. We're Christians, just like you. And we get upset. We say, hey, you know, you, you should honor our tradition and, and the fact that we follow Christ and just have a different theology. But then when the tables are turned and we're talking about each other, we're talking about other branches of the Latter-day Saint movement, all of a sudden, a lot of us suddenly become just like those Protestants or whoever, these other Christians that attack us for not being a part of their brand of Christianity. We say, oh, you don't belong to our sect, our church, our denomination, and so therefore you're an apostate because only our church holds the real keys or is the one true church or so on and so forth. And at that point, really, what's the difference between us and the Christians that attack us? Are we any better than them? So if we're going to be offering or asking for a bridge between ourselves and normally it's evangelical Protestants from my personal experience, but any other brand of Christianity out there as well, why is it that we don't desire to try to do the same thing for our fellow Latter-day Saints. Now, in my experience, I have found that generally the reason why is because we think that if we can get these other Christians on our side, it's going to make it easier to convert more Christians to our brand of Christianity, which in my mind is not really the Christ-like thing to do. Some people call that sheep stealing. If they're already with Christ, then let Christ lead them to us if where we are is where they're supposed to be. And it's the same thing with the greater Latter-day Saint movement. It doesn't matter if you're in some little church with only six people and the whole church, the, the congregation is the whole thing, or if you're in a large mega church with millions of people. Latter-day Saints are Latter-day Saints. We're all Christians. We may not all call ourselves Mormons, but when it comes to people outside of our faith, outside of our movement, they still lump us all together as one. We're the ones that segregate ourselves. And I just don't think that it's the Christ-like thing to do because of scriptures like this, with Jesus talking here in Mark. Why are we forbidding these other Latter-day Saints? Why aren't we instead giving them a cup of water to drink in Christ's name? Because they're not really against us, right? So aren't we all on the same team? And I'll probably talk about this in another video because one of my favorite scriptures in the Book of Mormon is Moroni 7. But in the first half of Moroni 7, Mormon goes into more detail on this topic. He goes into depth talking about how we need to understand that if someone is doing Christ-like things in the name of Christ and offering good gifts and using the gifts of the Spirit, then these are signs that we all still belong to that same one true church, the Church of Jesus Christ, even if they don't belong to the same sect, church, denomination, whatever you want to call it. In the Latter-day Saint movement, we're all brothers and sisters in different branches of the same faith, just like as Christians. We Latter-day Saints are brothers and sisters with our Catholic, Protestants, and other Christian family, extended family. Yeah, we all have different theologies, but it's Jesus Christ and that message 
that he shared in the New Testament, and for us, it's the same message, it's in the Book of Mormon, that really binds us together. So rather than searching out all these things that we find are different and calling each other apostates, or fake Mormons, or jack Mormons, or whatever it is, why don't we follow the teachings of Jesus Christ here in the New Testament? Why don't we realize that we are our own worst enemies and only serving the devil when we don't look for ways to get along and work together? The number one, in my mind, and most important work that we can do is stop calling each other apostates. Stop looking for the differences in theologies and various doctrines. Let's look for the things we have in common. Let's celebrate the diversity that has become our movement. There's over 200 different Latter-day Saint denominations. The more we can work together, the more we can grow as a movement and celebrate the gospel of Jesus Christ, the atonement of Jesus Christ, the grace of Jesus Christ together. I long for the day when we can hug each other and worship together in one another's church buildings and temples and set aside all this bickering. I've seen so many different denominations that want to say, well, there's only one person that's fit to be the leader of the church on the earth, and that's our guy. Well, it's our guy too, because our guy is Jesus. That's the guy that we all have in common. And Jesus in the scripture is called many different prophets and apostles. So if he did it in the Book of Mormon, and he did it in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, then doesn't it make sense that he's going to do that today too? Why would we only have one group of leaders to lead the whole world? Not everybody's going to listen to those leaders because they're going to add in their man-made theologies as we see everyone do. And that's okay. That's why the Lord set this up in such a way so that we can all win by being Latter-day Saints, by being Christians, in the branch of the faith that the Holy Spirit calls us to. Repent, come unto Jesus Christ. That's the core message of the gospel. So how can we, you, me, everyone listening to this video, move away from terms like apostate, excommunication? And how can we move towards giving, whether literally or symbolically, cups of water to one another as fellow Latter-day Saints and as fellow Christians in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's what the movement is about. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about how do we help each other a little more? How do we love each other a little more? How do we seek common ground? So that's my thought for you, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That concludes our sacrament from today. And uh, the prayer I read today came from this old copy of the Book of Mormon I have, uh, which is from the LDS Church. I read that one from day so A really old copy of the Book of Mormon, I would say, is from the 70s. Uh, and it's got Moroni on the front, a hard cover one. Yes, I've got many books of Mormon, including the, the Fellowships Book of Mormon uh, with the combined uh, numbering. Uh, yep. The Universal Book of Mormon uh, is the name of it and it comes in handy when you want to know the scriptures from the different churches and uh, so yep hopefully I can learn those um, Jewish names for God and I can I can use the prayers that David had given me it's just learning how to say the words um, so as we come to an end of our service, I hope you have a blessed week. And um, David will put the church's website on and hopefully he'll put my email address on as well so that if you need to contact me, you can do. And it'd be nice to hear from you all. 
So let us uh, finish up now and I'll say a prayer. El Shaddai, we thank you for this time that we can be together. And we thank you for your Sabbath day. And we thank you for your creation, the earth. And we ask you, Lord, that you will help us keep it. Help us not pollute it. And stop the greed of man. And I ask the Lord that you will help us stop war. And there can be peace among us, Lord. Everybody can get on with each other. We pray for those people that are sick. We think of Kyle. We think of Mark that's going into hospital to have his um, eyes done. His cataracts. We pray for all those that are in our book. All those that need healing. That they can feel your healing hand upon them. And let more people get to know you, Lord. And I say these things in your wondrous gift to us, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.